Go ahead and take a seat. How many of you, this is the first time that uh, you've been to a healing service? Really? Awesome. That's really good. How many of you have uh, seen Pastor Tom Loud's videos? Raise your hand. And when the first time that you saw a video, were you kind of, how many people thought it was kind of strange? Anybody? Paula, really? So this is how crazy it is. Um, pastor Tom, my brother-in-law, who's a senior pastor of this church, has done an amazing job walking the supernatural out. And by the Holy Spirit, by the training that he got done in Kansas a few years ago, he has come in this church and totally transformed this type of environment into something that we can understand and be tangible. And I remember the first time that, uh, well, let's back it up. Last year, last April, May, April, I went to Kansas. Now, there is a thing, a person that you may have heard by the name of Pete Cabrera, and the Lord has called him to train people to move in the supernatural, to figure out who they are and why they are here. And uh, so I went, and it blew my mind. Now, that experience, and it's amazing of all the years that I grew up in church, I was saved when I was um, six years old. I was adopted from a bad situation, and the Lord pulled me out of that situation, allowed me to be adopted to a Christian family. I heard the word. I knew what the word was. But I tell you, until you move in the supernatural, you have no idea what you're capable of doing. You have no idea. And I had no idea. I finally, it only took me 30-some years to figure out um, that actually I'm a son of God. Man, once you figure that out, I mean, I don't know why it took so long, but I had my aha moment in Kansas where I bawled my eyes out for hours. For a man, I am somebody special. I am a child of God. I am a son of God. And I have superpower. And uh, I remember went out for uh, my first healing and uh, with Pete, and we didn't do any talking. We just, it was really bizarre to me, and this never happened. Um, there was this guy that came out of this liquor store, got in his car, there was like four of us walked up to this, um, this guy in this truck, and uh, Pete just peed up, went up to him, because Pete could speak Spanish. This guy had Spanish background, and he said he had some pain in his back. And we, he said, okay, none of you are going to talk. You're just going to point. And we pointed at this guy. And the guy goes, why do you guys point at me? He says, just wait, just watch. And like 30 seconds later, the guy was healed. Said out a word. I thought that was very, very bizarre to me. I didn't realize that the identity that I have in Christ, that I really don't even need to say a word because Christ lives in me. And when I know who I am and what I'm dealing with, you just walk it out. So anyway, that's my little testimony for that. Let's open our Bibles to Psalms 130. And we're going to read Psalms, which is a song, and we're going to read the lyrics of this song. And this is an amazing song. We up there? Good. How many of you had some freak out moments before? Yeah? How many freak out daily?
wants to wait. We're going to read, the topic of my title tonight is A Soul That Won't Sink. Okay? I'm going to give you some guidelines of how it progresses with real life human condition on a daily basis. And I am speaking from David, and I met a David tonight. It's a great Bible name. And uh, David was very emotional. It's interesting because it says that he was a man after God's own heart. But man, he was emoed out. Okay? He was. Okay? At the beginning, I like to call it the beginning of his career. But at the beginning of his ministry, when he was 16 years old, okay, watching sheep, man, the Lord had picked him out already. He was said he was a good-looking guy, and, uh, and he was one of the youngest. It didn't matter. And he had a type of faith that I wish I had. I really do. Because that faith for a young man was just amazing. You know, um, he was picked to be a king. As we know, David's life, he uh, killed a giant, killed a lion. I haven't killed any lions lately. I haven't fought any lions or killed any bears, but he did. He had, to me, did you call it super faith? No, he just knew who God was. Okay? And, uh, and this passage here has to do with the four stages what a person goes through in life on a daily basis. Okay? Because really, David, his faith was super faith, as I call it, at the beginning of his ministry, but his life went on, and he was being chased by Saul. Okay? And life was stressing him out. This is how he reacted. Okay? And I want you to put yourself here because this really has to do with each of us. Okay? It says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. And I want to break this verse down, and I think we can all break it down together when it has to deal with each of us. This summer, we had our bathroom done at our place. And uh, I don't know if you guys have done any remodel. I knew nothing about contractors. But I did know that they lied to me about the, how much time they're going to spend getting it done. So my wife interviewed like six contractors, and this guy seemed, well, he lived across the street practically. We can have your bathroom done in two weeks. Most amazing time. I don't have to worry about using the bathroom at the pool house. Well, to make a long story short, two weeks turned into three weeks, turned into four weeks, turned into a mess in the house. Turn it into the towel guy was just flinging, oh, it was just a mess. I was freaking out. Now here it says, out of the depths I cried to you. So we're talking about a deep from the soul, from your gut. He was freaking out. That doesn't say why he was freaking out, but I can think we can put ourselves in situations, and some of you here tonight are freaking out. Some of you here, you're here for a reason. You're here because someone is sick. You're sick yourself. You've lost your job. You need prayer. And I can relate to this. It says, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. For mercy. And I look at this saying, Lord, just have some mercy on me. I am really struggling. I'm really freaking out. Lord, show me some mercy. And I think all of us will go through a moment in life when we start freaking out that we're done freaking out. How many have been through that? You've had your moment. You get over it. Okay? This is a real life, I call it human condition, that David is just sharing from his heart about his prayer. This is his prayer life. Okay? His prayer life. 
It says, if you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Okay? So picture yourself. You're, you're freaking out. Okay? You're sick. You lost your job. And you're totally just having a moment. Then we go to this verse. Let's go to Psalms 46.10. This was my verse for this summer. And actually, my wife and I did a meditation on this verse. It says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And if you break that verse down, that means be still. It's time to put all that stress out. I want you to sit and be still. It says, and know, and know that what? In the, in the Old Testament, they use the word, I am. I am God. Know that I am God. I call this moment your aha moment. The moment that you realize you're done freaking out, you can't cry anymore, you don't know what to do, but you sit down and you sit and you think and you relax. Then you realize who God really is. You realize that, man, God, you are a forgiving God. You forgive my sins. Lord, you are feared. You are respected. Lord, you will follow through with what you say. Lord, you are the healer. Lord, you're my joy. You're my comforter. Whatever you're going through, in that moment of being still, God can be that for you. Be no and know. You got to know. When you know, you know. And that will, train, that will totally transform your life. The word I know. Do you really know? Or do you think you know? You really know. Because when you know, the way you think and the way you act will change. That's part two. So on this journey that he's going through, your everyday situation, part one, it says he's freaking out. He says, Lord, are you there? Are you listening to me? Don't you know what I'm going through? I've been there. Yeah, I see what you're going through. Are you done freaking out? He goes, yeah, I'm done freaking out. Or, yeah, you're an amazing God. I know that you're going to come through on this. Because you are God. Part three on his journey, it says, I will wait. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And his word, I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen. Wait for the morning. More than watchmen, wait for the morning. David here is saying, he says, I will watch. I will wait for the Lord. I am watching. Lord, I'm going to watch. I'm going to wait for you to do something. I'm going to wait. I mean, I'm watching, God. I know you're going to do something. I'm going to step back. I'm going to quit freaking out. I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. I'm going to be more assurance that you're going to do something, more than a watchman. What is a watchman? Someone who guards the city in this ancient time. Somebody who looks at the light when it comes up or goes down. There are more in assurance. I know, God, that you're going to do something. I'm waiting. I'm watching. You're going to do something. I have so much assurance of who God is. My soul is anchored in God. My soul, my mind, and my emotions are anchored in God. My whole being. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you, God. And I will continue to wait. I have so much assurance that you're going to heal my family, that you're going to heal me. You're going to give me a job. You're going to mend my marriage because I know who God is. Amen? And the last part, I love it. I really love testimonies. You know what a testimony is? A testimony is something that you've gone through that you can share with somebody else. And I love David here. Because David's freaking out, totally having a meltdown. He, boom, he had his aha moment. I'm still, okay, God, you got this. Okay, I'm going to wait. 
you promise. I anticipate something great because you're going to follow through what you said in the Word. And then he has a testimony. What is his testimony? His testimony says, O Israel, put your hope in the Lord. Why would he say that? Because he knows after freaking out who God is. For the Lord is unfailing love. He loves you unconditionally. He's a father. He knows what you're going through. He has the best for you. And with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. I love this journey because this is you and me. This is me all the time. I can say I'm emotional. I freak out. Then I have to back it up. I got to get in a place in my mind or in my house or wherever you need to be at. You need to take a breath because your mind will mess you up. Okay, you need to take a breath. You need to sit. You need to relax. You need to meditate. Okay, God, you got this. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to do it. And that's what we need to have, the knowing that God is in control. And that's what David went through. He's like you and me. He went through that all the time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the word. Amen. We are, we're 20 minutes early. Good. That means more praying. So I'm really just pleased that you guys are here tonight. I love praying for people. I love seeing healings. I like people just sharing from their heart. We can just talk, you know, and you can get through stuff. So um, I need Bob and Vicky. Bob, Vicky, you guys want to come up? Philip? Philip, I want to, you know what? This is Philip. I introduced you this morning. Philip? You kept your word, bro. Thank you for coming tonight. I mean, this is an amazing young man. Who, who? Wow, it really means a lot. And uh, Bob, I mean Brian and Julia, want to come up? Yes, come. And uh, anybody else? Oh. Gail, JR, please come up. So if you have a need and you need some prayer or you just want to talk to the, someone on the prayer team or whatever you're going through, the Lord is here. There's a lot of power in this room. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we're just going to expect something supernatural. So just go ahead and line up. And, okay, I'm going to pair up with Philip. And then Trevor, would you like to come up, Pastor Trevor? Thank you. Elena, over here. Thank, um, worship team, thank you for uh, playing in music tonight. Ken, thank you for playing as we speak. So if you need prayer, please come up. We've got two lines here in the aisle way. And uh, it doesn't matter if you have a hangnail or whatever. It doesn't matter because those things are all concerned with Jesus. So please come up, stand in line. We would like to pray for you. It doesn't matter why you're here. 